In this chapter, we're looking at cellular respiration and fermentation. So in cellular respiration, um, we're thinking about how we get, or like why we eat and what we do with our food. So when we eat our food, there's basically two reasons why we eat. Um, one is to get energy, and the other one is to grow, biosynthesis. Um, and so when we think about like where our food comes from, uh, during photosynthesis, the light shines down onto plants, and then plants are able to um, convert that solar energy into chemical energy. And so um, here we can see that the sun, um, during the light reaction, uh, the plants are going to take um, that solar energy and convert it into ATP and NADPH. And then that energy is invested into the bonds during the Calvin cycle of a glucose molecule, or G3P. So if we really think about the big picture here, you have carbon dioxide gaining electrons, hydrogens, and it has the investment of ATP to build um, three carbon uh, carbohydrates, G3P. Now remember, a G3P and a G3P together can make glucose. So you have now a six carbon uh, molecule with energy that was invested from the light reaction in its bonds. So in cellular respiration, we're taking that carbohydrate and we're breaking it down. We're taking the energy that was stored in the bonds, the potential energy, and harnessing it. So we're going to look at how you do that. <laughs> um, and so let's go ahead and uh, see. So when we talk about harvesting stored energy or potential energy, uh, we're getting it from organic molecules. Organic molecules are our carbs, our lipids, our proteins. Um, now carbohydrates is your body's first choice for a source of energy, but we are able to also get it from fat or from protein. Um, now the key here is that we're using the mitochondria, and the mitochondria um, has a couple different processes, processes, metabolic pathways uh, that we're going to use. We have glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain to look at how we get our food and convert it into ATP, which would be a usable form of energy for us. Now the key to this, though, to this metabolic pathway is that it's going to rely on enzymes. And enzymes are going to control the step-by-step -step reactions to try and um, not waste potential energy in the form of heat. Uh, some of it, uh, when we do break the bonds, heat is released. However, enzymes are going to try and, and limit how much energy is wasted in that form of heat. All right, so when we talk about harvesting stored energy, um, we're basically talking about like getting energy from our food. And we're gonna use glucose, and we're gonna go through a catabolic pathway. Remember, catabolism, our uh, catabolic pathways break things down to release energy. Um, and so the reactants, our glucose is the one that we're gonna use to teach this, but it can use fat, it can use protein. Um, there's also oxygen required, which we'll see at the last step of the electron transport chain. And then the products are going to be carbon dioxide and water, which are also the reactants of photosynthesis. Uh, and ATP is what's produced. Um, now also, uh, heat is a component of this as well. A lot of the potential energy in our food, as we break our food down, is released as heat. And this is why when you exercise and you're breaking down your food to power your body, uh, you get hot. Your face gets hot. You have heat being cre created uh, simply because as you break those bonds, heat is being released. All right. So now how do we do this? How do we get energy from breaking bonds? Well, when we break bonds, um, the big picture here is we're going to take the electrons. Um, and so as electrons move, they're carrying energy with them. So I, what did I say? All right. Let's think about this. So when we move electrons, they're carrying the energy. So the big idea here is as we break these bonds, we're going to take the electrons. And when we take an electron, um, a proton will also join together. So we see it carried in a cell as a hydrogen. Um, we'll use electron carriers for this. Um, but anyway, so then that's how energy moves in cells. Um, so again, we are going to break the bonds and take the electrons. And then that's how we're going to move the energy from our food to the electron transport chain. Okay. So again, how do we harvest energy? How do we get energy from our food? Is we're going to break the bonds and take the electrons. And that energy moves in the form of electrons. All right. 
Okay, so uh, when we talk about, though, uh, donating or, re or receiving electrons, we're going to talk about it in terms of oxidation and reduction. So here on the um, circle on the left, when a molecule donates an electron or gives up an electron, we call that oxidized. Oh, I'm sorry. If a molecule has also has picked up an electron or gained an electron, it also will gain a hydrogen. And that's like to balance the charges. <clears throat> so here, this molecule is oxidized while this one is reduced. So a reduced molecule, you can tell it's reduced because it gained electrons, but it also gained a hydrogen. So it'll have an H as part of it. Whereas a molecule that has been oxidized will be left with a positive charge. So they're kind of easy to identify. Um, okay, so here, if something loses an electron or donates an electron, we call it oxidized. Um, and if something gains an electron, it is reduced. All right, and any time that we go through these steps, if anything is oxidized, something has to be reduced. Or if a molecule is reduced, the electrons had to come from somewhere, that means something else was oxidized. Okay. Um, so, here we go. So you can kind of check yourself. Think uh, number one here is oxidized. That's reduced. In the reduced form, reduced form. This is an oxidized, oxidized. Okay. So when we talk about how do we move these electrons, so when we break the bonds, where do we put the electrons? We're going to put them onto electron carriers. So NAD plus is actually B3. It's one of your vitamins. Um, but it's an electron carrier that the mitochondria uses. So here, uh, NAD plus, throughout cellular respiration, this electron carrier is going to gain electrons. So it's going to gain electrons. And when it gains electrons, it is now becoming reduced. You can see it has gained electrons, a hydrogen, and then it's going to actually carry those electrons. Look, it's moving energy inside the cell. It's going to carry those electrons to the electron transport chain. And at the electron transport chain, this electron carrier is going to be oxidized. So it'll be oxidized and donate the electrons as well as the hydrogen to the electron transport chain. And then those uh, molecules will be used, or those you know, electrons and hydrogens will be used in the production of ATP uh, during the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. <laughs> All right, so uh, electron carriers are going to carry electrons. <laughs> um, they, throughout the process, become reduced as they gain electrons from our food, and then they um, carry them over to the electron transport chain where the electron carrier will then be oxidized and donate the electrons and hydrogens to the electron transport chain. So that's a game in my class. All right, so now let's look at cellular respiration. Um, here's an overview. The first step that always happens, no matter what, is glycolysis. And glycolysis, glycolysis, literally means splitting sugars. So we're going to split the sugars, uh, split a sugar. Um, and if there's oxygen present, glycolysis will be followed by the oxidation in the mitochondria, the oxidation of pyruvate, uh, the citric acid cycle, as well as the electron transport chain. And if it's uh, with, this is aerobic respiration, meaning with oxygen. Um, and if there isn't any oxygen available, then um, anaerobic respiration will follow, and that is fermentation. There's two kinds of fermentation. There's lactic acid and alcoholic fermentation. All right, so um, glycolysis. A very detailed process, but we don't need to learn that. And so um, we are actually going to um, look at glycolysis here. So glycolysis literally means the breaking of sugar into two. Um, so throughout the process of glycolysis, it takes six carbon molecule, glucose, and breaks it into two molecules of pyruvate. Each pyruvate has three carbons. Um, this actually involves ten different steps, like we saw on that crazy slide. Um, and it uh, is controlled by enzymes. Luckily in our class, we don't need to know the names of the enzymes or the specific steps. Um, but we'll see how it happens. Now, glycolysis is an ancient pathway that happens um, in all cells. It evolved in prokaryotes billions of years ago. Um, and it is how the first step in taking energy from organic molecules. Um, and it's very inefficient, though. So with one glucose molecule, you only get two ATP. And it also happens in the cytoplasm of each cell. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and we can skip that. So now let's look at glycolysis in our um, cytoplasm. So here we have a sugar, 
And in the first steps of glycolysis, uh, enzymes are going to control each of these reactions. So in the first step, an enzyme is going to come and actually will take um, uh, a phosphate from the uh, cytoplasm, or I'm sorry, sorry, will take a phosphate from ATP and is going to attach it to our glucose molecule. So in the first steps, we're actually um, requiring energy. So when you require energy that's called and invest it in a reaction, it's an endergonic reaction. So the first steps of glycolysis are endergonic. And you might be thinking, I thought the whole purpose was to release energy from our food. True, the majority of the steps happening, the overall process of respiration will be releasing energy. However, the very first steps are endergonic um, and will require two ATP. So here, two ATP have been invested. Um, and then the next part is uh, going, an enzyme will come and split this substrate into two. And then um, other enzymes will come. And then in this active site, so we need to remember that um, enzymes facilitate or speed up chemical reactions. So right here, this is the active site um, of this enzyme. And this is a substrate part of a chemical reaction. Um, and so what's going to be happening in this next part is that in that active site, you have a reaction happening where our glucose molecule, now in not called glucose anymore, but these three carbon molecules, there's energy in these bonds. So here's our first step at breaking the bonds and taking electrons. So we're going to begin to oxidize our food. We're going to oxidize our food and take all the electrons we possibly can from our food molecules. And that's how we're getting energy from them. We're oxidizing our food, we're breaking the bonds, and we're taking the electrons, which is how energy moves in cells. So in this first step here, um, these enzymes are going to be breaking bonds and taking electrons. So our, our substrate, our food molecule, is going to be oxidized. That means that electron carrier is going to be reduced. So we've taken some electrons. Now within that active site, though, there's a little bit of energy available. And it's actually going to attach a phosphate from the cytoplasm or the cytosol to that substrate. So here, um, again, in the next active site, the electron carrier, we're going to oxidize our food and reduce the electron carrier. We're getting our electrons from our food molecules. So we'll uh, reduce an electron carrier and attach a phosphate, an inorganic phosphate, to the substrate. Okay. Um, and if you really are curious of how this is happening, which bonds are being broken, you can follow um, the molecular steps of glycolysis and kind of see where things are happening if it makes it easier for you to understand. Okay, and now, though, in glycolysis, we're going to uh, make some ATP. So um, next, we will have enzymes come and take a phosphate from the substrate. Remember, these are enzyme reactions. So this right here is the substrate. And so um, when we take the phosphate from a substrate, we're going to call this substrate-level phosphorylation. So again, we have substrate level phosphorylation because the phosphate is coming from a substrate. Um, again, here we go. Substrate level phosphorylation. We're taking a phosphate from the substrate. Let me do that four times. So when we look at glycolysis, um, it's making ATP by the process of substrate level phosphorylation. Um, and uh, initially, if you remember, we invested two ATPs in the very beginning as an endergonic process. And so um, our net gain is two ATP. So it's kind of like if I had, f um, if you had $4 and I was like, hey, I'll give you $2 if you give me your four. Yeah, I got four, but really I had to put in two to get those four. So my net profit's only $2. Okay, so in glycolysis, um, we end up with two ATP, two pyruvates, and each pyruvate is um, three carbons, and then also two reduced electron carriers. All right, and that's glycolysis.